benefits of a low-tech aquarium. The pH remains stable. It is low maintenance. The fish behavior is normal. Plants prevent the substrate from becoming toxic. Well, hello. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Hello. This is Father Fish. I'm going to bring to you today a review of Diana Wallstead's book, The Ecology of the Plant and Aquarium. I'm going to review the book. I'm going to be pushing through it pretty quickly, hitting highlights, hitting the issues that are most significant that are raised in the book. Keep in mind, this book is the result of many years of research on developing aquariums using soil. So let's begin. The first thing Diana talks about in the book is alleopathy. It has to do with plants fighting with each other. Not an issue that we are likely to encounter or even know if we are encountering it in our aquarium. So point two, bacteria. Chapter four classifies different bacterial processes in terms of their positive and negative impacts on the aquarium. Topics include the generation of plant nutrients, CO2 and humic substances, that's plant substances, by heliotropic bacteria. In addition, I explain how bacterial processes both create and destroy aquarium toxins. She discusses the sources of plant nutrients and specifically carbon. Section 7, Plant Nutrition and Ecology. Chapter 7 describes the fundamentals of aquatic plant nutrition. Number eight, substrates. Most hobbyists do not have soil substrates in their aquariums, which may be the main reason they have trouble growing plants. For a better understanding of this critical topic, chapter eight discusses the general nature of soils before delving into the even greater complexities of submerged soils. Finally, it describes how hobbyists can use soils in the aquarium effectively. Number 11, practical aquarium setup and maintenance. Is the balanced aquarium dead? Hobbyists, mainly from Europe and within the last 20 years, that would be from roughly 1980 to the year 2000, developed techniques for growing plants in the aquarium that were highly successful. The sophisticated technology they used consistently produced beautiful planted aquariums, which I will call high-tech aquariums. The end result did indeed resemble a slice of nature. Unfortunately, the artificial methods to obtain such an aquarium ignored many of the natural processes of bacteria and plants. The end result, healthy fish and plants, resembled the natural balanced aquarium, but the means to obtain it were unnatural, expensive, and laborious. With this book, I would like to resurrect the older version of the natural planted aquarium, with, but with a much greater understanding of how it works. This then is the key to understanding the book. She is going back to an earlier time 
when dirt and sand were used by everyone in the hobby to maintain their aquariums. We have to go back to the 1950s and the early 1960s and back beyond that to reach this level of aquarium keeping. There are benefits, she describes, the characteristics of a low-tech aquarium. Number one, the pH remains stable. Number two, it is low maintenance. It is easily maintained. Number three, the fish behavior is normal. Number four, number four discusses how plants benefit the aquarium. And this then becomes the fundamental focus of the book. How do plants benefit the aquarium? Number one, they protect fish by removing ammonia. Number two, they protect fish by removing metals from the water. Number three, they control algae. Number four, they stabilize the pH. Number five, they increase biological activity within the tank. And this one is fundamentally critical. By increasing biological activity, we create an environment which can be said to be balanced, in which every aspect of that environment supports every other aspect, and it creates a cycle of life in which, the, among other features, the tank is quite literally creating food for small fish living in that tank, reducing substantially the need to put food in the tank. Number six, it plants oxygenate the water. Even when plants are not photosynthesizing, such as at night, they probably remove less oxygen than one would expect. This is because they prefer to use the oxygen stored in their tissues rather than take up oxygen in the water. So the old saw about plants taking oxygen out of the water at night and putting it back in the tank during the day is not true. The plants are taking the oxygen they need during non-photosynthesizing at night by using oxygen that is stored in the plants. Number seven. Plants remove CO2 from the water. They also remove CO2 from the soil. The soil creates vastly more CO2 than does the CO, CO2 exchange going on at the surface, or than does simply the, uh, the breathing, the aspect aspiration of the fish. CO2 is created in the substrate by virtue of the break of bacteria breaking down waste components, thereby creating CO2, which is then taken up by the roots of the plants. Number eight, plants prevent the substrate from becoming toxic. Plants take up nutrients. A substrate that supports good plant growth doesn't become toxic, and it rarely, if ever, needs to be vacuumed. Plant roots keep it healthy. We have taken this, as you will see, a step further by creating a substrate that is indeed a permanent substrate. Promoting plant growth in the aquarium 
is the close of the book. And she lists seven items. Number one, nutrients. Tap water, a soil substrate, and fish food easily provides all nutrients required by aquarium plants. Algae control. Plants cannot grow if algae smothers them, so she discusses short and long-term strategies for controlling algae in the book. Fertile substrates. In practice, gravel substrates do not work very well. Plants need a fertile substrate to grow well and compete with algae. Number four, bacteria. Bacteria break down organic matter into CO2 and other nutrients that plants can use. Number five, emergent aerial growth. Plants growing up out of the tank. Plants that access air for light and CO2 grow much better than fully submerged plants. Number six, light. Adequate light is essential for growing plants effectively. And number seven, plant species. Different plants may respond differently to individual tank conditions, such as lighting, substrate, water chemistry, CO2, and other plant species. That's what's in the book. There are, at the end of the book, several important concerns. One of the concerns is with anaerobics. The other concern is with the duration of nutrients in the substrate. Both of these issues are left essentially undealt with in the book. They are presented as problems at the end of research that, let me remind you, occurred 20 years ago. Since then, we have found solutions to those problems. And that will be the purpose and the function of the next video, which is Father Fish and how Father Fish approaches Diana Wallstead's ecology of the planted aquarium. Thank you for joining us and do come back for the follow-up on taking the next step with Diana Wallstead.